Good day everyone, my name is Kaden Mazokere. I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Uh, I'm the author of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. I've written Economics Grade 10, 11 and 12 and uh, I've published Business Studies Grade 11 and 12. Alright, so in this lesson we're going to continue with our daily lessons. Uh, so this is lesson number 12. No, 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 no. Yes, I think it's lesson number 12. I'll see just now. Um, on business cycles. So uh, I gave you homework in the previous lesson. And so I want us to start by revising. Okay, so it says determine whether the following examples are exogenous or endogenous uh, factors of business cycles. All right, uh, as we all know, business cycles are successive periods of fluctuations in economic activity. So those fluctuations can either be caused by factors from outside uh, or they could be caused by factors from within the economy. So the ones that um, when, when business cycles, when these fluctuations are caused by things from outside, we call them exogenous reasons. And then when they are caused by things from within, uh, we call that endogenous. All right, so we're going to see. Let's look at drought first. Uh, do you think drought is endogenous or exogenous? Uh, the answer that will be exogenous because a drought is something that happens from outside. And so, yeah, so if uh, we have a recession because it has not been raining, something like that, for a long time, uh, mainly due to let's say the agricultural sector obviously uh, the, the, the primary sector is the one that's going to suffer the most so if there is a long spell of no rain there is definitely going to be less production in the primary sector uh, mainly in agriculture so uh, that drop in economic activity uh, will mean that there is going to be less output for the period so if we have that decline uh, that would have been caused by something from outside. So that's an exogenous reason. All right, then the next one is overproduction. Uh, overproduction, do you think that's happening within or it's it's happening outside? Uh, and I think this is obviously uh, endogenous. This is happening from within the economy. All right, then the next one is change in consumer taste and preference. Uh, what do you think this one is? Do you think this is an endogenous or it's an exogenous reason? I'll say this one is an exogenous reason. The next one is earthquakes, uh, an earthquake. Uh, that is more or less the same as a drought. So we're going to give the same answer, exogenous. When there happens to be a, a gas shortage, supply uh, decrease or shrinks, when this occurs, demand for gas increases and so does the price. Equilibrium is reached once again when purchasers adjust uh, to a higher price okay this happening uh, i think you can see this is something that is happening from within so this will then become an endogenous reason and then the last question a war in the middle east affects the oil supplies which in turn affects business cycles uh this one let me see this one will be something happening from outside all right so uh, here are the answers uh, i think that's exactly what I was saying, exo, endo, like that, like that, like that. All right, so you can mark yourself. So let's move uh, right into unit two. We want to now, oh, we, we continue in unit two because the, the activity tells me the previous lesson was uh, causes, yes, endogenous, exogenous. So we continue with unit two. All right, so this is lesson number 13. I think I had said it's 12, but yes, I had it mixed up. So in this one, we are going to look at kinds of business cycles. So <clears throat> there are four kinds. And so we're going to look at each and see how you're going to know. But uh, one thing that is going to help you, you'll see even in the activity that I'll give you at the end of this lesson, uh, mainly uh, the years, like the, 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 the length of that cycle, then uh, I think that's the main thing. All right, so the first one is the kitchen cycle. Uh, it takes uh, between three and five years in length. All right, and as we all know that uh, a length of a business cycle, it, it's, it's a complete cycle. Like the time it takes for, the, the, for business cycles to move through a complete cycle. So we are going to have all four phases of a cycle. That is a recession, a depression, a recovery, and 
a prosperity so all those four uh, happening that will give us uh, what do you call it uh, a complete cycle so if that cycle takes between three and five years we then call it a kitchen cycle so let's see how it came about who came up with the idea and uh, what things happen during that particular cycle so it is a short business cycle uh, it is the shortest amongst the four that we're going to look at so it is a short business cycle of about 40 months discovered in the 1920s by joseph kitchen so it was given the name of the person who discovered it this cycle is uh, believed to be accounted for by uh, time legs in information movements affecting the decision making of commercial firms uh, firms react to the improvement of commercial situation through the increase in output through the full employment of the extent fixed capital assets right uh, as a result within a certain period of time ranging between a few months and two years the the market gets flooded with commodities that is the likes of gold and so on with commodities whose quantities become gradually excessive so the demand declines um, prices drop the, pro the the produced commodities get accumulated in inventories uh, which informs um, entrepreneurs of the necessity of uh, to to reduce output however this process takes some time so it takes some time for the information that supply significantly exceeds demand uh, to get to the business people so you know what happens when supply exceeds demand when there's more uh, you know on the market than what we need and this has been caused by uh, the, the the overproduction uh, that we, we 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 spoke about all right so as it takes entrepreneurs time to check the, this information and to make the decision to reduce production because that's exactly what has to happen reduce production because there's now oversupply time um, is also necessary to materialize this decision so these are the time legs that generate the kitchen cycle another relevant time leg is the leg between the materialization of the aform um, aforementioned decision which is the decision to reduce production right um, and the decrease of the excessive amount of commodities accumulated in inventories all right uh, then yet after this decrease takes place one can observe the conditions for a new phase of growth of demand prices output etc all right the next cycle which will take between 7 and 11 years is called the juggler cycle so let's have a look at this one uh, juggler cycle is a fixed investment cycle for 7 to 11 years identified in 1862 by Clement Juggler. Within the juggler cycle, one can observe uh, oscillations of investments into fixed capital and not just changes in the level of employment of fixed capital as is observed uh, with the respect of kitchen cycle. 2010 research employing uh, spectral analysis confirmed uh, the presence of the juggler cycle in the world GDP dynamics. And then the next one, uh, which takes 15 to 25 years, is Kuznets. Uh, uh, Kuznets swing is a claimed medium range economic wave with a period of 15 to 25 years found in 1930 by Simon Kuznets. Kuznets connected these waves with demographic processes, in particular with immigrant inflows, outflows, and the changes in construction intensity that they uh, caused. That is why he denotes them as demographic or building cycles. Uh, swings, um, Kuznets swings have been also interpreted as infrastructural investment cycles. Then the last one is contractive and this one you'll get different spellings in different textbooks and um, I, I don't know why it's spelled differently. All right, so this one will take between 45 to 60 years in length. So the, the contractive waves 
are supposedly cycle like phenomena in the world um in, in the modern world economy the the period of the wave averages at uh 50 and ranges from approximately 40 to 60 years and uh, so the 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 cycle consists of alternating uh intervals between high sectoral growth and intervals of relatively slow growth unlike the short-term business cycle the long wave of this uh, theory is not completely accepted by current mainstream economics uh, although there is um, empirical support for it all right so this brings us to the end it was a very very short one and um, yes so the the simple activity here 1.1 uh, to 1.10 is uh, just uh, looking at if we have an outswing upswing of 22 months and uh, a downswing of 29 months number one tell us uh, the number of years and months and then number two tell us the kind of business cycle all right so uh, yes that's that's exactly what you have to do so 1.1 1.2 so you look at the that particular uh is it a row or it's a column uh that's a row so the row the first row which is 22 months and 29 months first tell us the number of years and months and then determine what kind of business cycle that will be all right so this brings us to the end of the the lesson as you can see we are giving uh the the activity already all right, thank you so much and uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, this lesson was uh, as simple as that. So mainly if in an exam, uh, worst case scenario will be discussing in detail, um, let's say kitchen cycle. So you would have to have at least four points. And so you can go ahead and have a look at it and see what it is that you can remember. Another one would be uh, they could be they could ask you also uh, they could give you a scenario maybe and then ask you which cycle would this be so just make sure uh, you you know oh, oh another one the easiest would be maybe name any two you know name any two uh, kinds of business cycle that would be an easy one then you just say kitchen and juggler. All right, thank you so much and uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.